Okay, it's a few days later and I've let the T9 set inside the frame. So I'm gonna start installing components. First thing I'm gonna do is install the bottom bracket. So I have here a SRAM threaded bottom bracket. This frame uses a English thread, which is very common. And this is a GXP bottom bracket for SRAM cranks. So I'll take this out and uh, we'll start with the drive side. So this is gonna go in here. And before I put it in, I'm gonna make sure this is clean. So I have already wiped that clean, so we're good in there. And I'm going to just lightly grease the threads. This is to keep, uh, keep it from getting seized when I wanna remove it. And also helps keep uh, moisture from getting inside. And we'll also grease the threads of the actual bottom bracket. Don't need a ton, just enough to cover all the threads sufficiently. So this is the right side, or drive side, so we'll just thread that in by hand first. Drive side, um, actually, you'll see the markings there. Um, threads in counterclockwise. So it's a left hand thread. So we'll turn it this way to make sure it goes in easily. Again, you want to do it by hand to make sure it doesn't cross thread. And if you feel any sort of resistance or anything in there, just kind of back it out and back in a few times to clear the threads. So we'll do this pretty much hand tight for now. Okay, until we get here. Now you'll see here there's a torque setting. It says 25 to 30 foot-pounds. So for that, I'm gonna use a torque wrench, which I have already set to 25 foot-pounds. I'm gonna go on the lower end. So we'll do that. And we'll just use, I have a bottom bracket uh, wrench here that fits onto this. And we'll just tighten this until you feel the, uh, the torque wrench click. Like that. Once you reach a certain tension, the wrench clicks, so we know that it's tight enough. So we're good there. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just gonna rotate this real quick so you can see the, uh, the left hand or non-drive side. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to first uh, grease these threads. Okay. Grease the threads of the actual cup here and then you'll see here that uh, the non-drive side threads on conventionally or clockwise so a right hand thread so put it in like this again do it by hand to make sure you don't cross thread so far it's going in pretty smoothly so that's good okay we'll do it hand tight and then we'll use our Torque wrench again. Well, this time we'll set it for regular, um, regular thread, and we'll tighten it till we feel the click. Right there. So that's tight enough. And I have these uh, these uh, bearing covers, and there's already some grease in there, but it looks a little dry. So I'm going to add some grease to the inside of the bearing. Just like this, don't need a lot. That also will help to keep water from getting in. And we'll put it right there like that. All right, so our bottom bracket's installed. Next, I'm gonna install my crank set. So we're doing a one by, so there's only gonna be a single chain ring. This is a 42 tooth, 11 speed SRAM Apex crank, a GXP spindle, so it should fit in there. And before I put it in, just gonna put a little bit of grease on the spindle. So another reason we do this is to hopefully avoid any creaking or noise later on, um, in addition to just keeping water out. So we'll put the spindle through the drive side of the bottom bracket. Make sure your bearing covers on there and if it fell off, make sure you replace it before you install it or you have to take it off again. So we'll just put this through, should be a pretty good fit. Just test this out, seems to be turning well so far. 
All right, we're gonna attach our non-drive side crank arm. Make sure it's parallel to the other side. And it should fit onto the spindle like that. You can see that they're straight. So I'm gonna take a eight millimeter hex key and just start tightening that. And you'll see that the crank arm is slowly moving in towards the bottom bracket. And I'm gonna use my torque wrench again. Start tightening it. It's the wrong way. Okay, that's good. So crank seems to be turning pretty smoothly. I'm just gonna squeeze it. I don't feel any play, so I think we're good here. Yep, seems good. Spins freely. Okay, so cranks are done. Okay, next we're gonna do our rear derailleur. Pretty easy. Again, as always, gonna put a list a little bit of grease onto the thread to keep it from seizing. Don't need a lot, just enough to cover the threads of the bolt. And this also is SRAM Apex. I have a pretty much complete SRAM Apex group set, except for a couple things, which you'll see later. Um, and we'll worry about indexing and setting it up later. But for now, we'll just install it. So I'm gonna line the threads up with the hanger there. And this is a five millimeter hex key. Make sure it goes in straight. And again, if you feel any resistance, then maybe just back it off a little bit, clear the threads and back in. This should be pretty tight, but don't over tighten. So just tight enough. It's good, like that. And that's it, our rear derailleur is installed. By the way, this is a long cage with a clutch so it should accommodate a nice, really big cassette. Okay, before I move on with the other parts, I'm gonna cut my steer tube because I don't want to install my brakes and the bars and the shifters and then have to take everything off and cut the tube. Because right now the, the tube from the factory is pretty long and I only want it up to here probably maximum. Later on I might cut it even shorter, but for now I'm gonna use these 10 and five millimeter spacers and I'll just use these as uh, my my starting point and then later on I might cut it shorter but for now we'll do it like this just to get a feel for it so what I'm going to do is use my knife and just kind of notch on the steer tube where the spacers stop so when I take it off I should see that that line it doesn't have to be perfect just so you kind of know where it is so I can see that and I'm actually going to cut a little bit be below that, maybe like one millimeter or two, mill two millimeters below. So that way there's room for the stem cap later on. Okay, so yeah, right now I'm going to remove the stem and fork and start cutting. So I'm going to loosen this. You'll see once I take off the stem, then the fork's going to come out. 